What's up guys, I'm Nick. And I'm Zach. And we are Supermoon Studios. This is gonna be our year in review video. Over the course of 2020, we filmed about six short films. Uh, we filmed two music videos and we did a lot of photography. We went out there and kinda did everything we could during the pandemic. So this is just going to be us going through our short films. We're gonna talk about what went right, what went wrong, how the writing process went, how our editing process went, and basically our favorite moments from this year. So the first film we did last year was called Frigid. Uh, it's a short little film that we did at my house actually. Frigid kind of came as an idea from we had an old freezer that we were getting rid of. We were giving it to a family friend. And when I was moving it up the stairs, it started shaking and just like kind of the image of it shaking kind of kind of creeped me out. And I was like, what if, uh, what if it was a haunted freezer? So <laughs> I asked my mom if we could, uh, if we could, if we could give it to them like a week or two late and she said that would be okay. So we, we set it up in the basement and uh, we just kind of went from there. We got our buddy John to act in it. Um, to write it was uh, a little bit of a challenge just because it is kind of a silent film. So it was it was just a little bit difficult to find like things for him to do. But uh, the idea from just like his groceries disappearing kind of like jumped off of that. And we had some old space footage from Rascals that we did in 2019, which uh, I kind of tried to incorporate into the freezer at the end there too. So all of it was just kind of a cool down project from Deering Rascals and it was just kind of getting some stuff out of our system and having a little bit of fun. Uh, we filmed the whole thing in one day. Zach, Zach was there. <laughs> Zach, uh, we, we did a lot of setups and uh, John brought a few outfits and we just kind of powered through the filming from there. Let's uh, take a look at it. Let's, let's take a look. We had to cobble together all those groceries from stuff uh, in my fridge. Also, this one was pretty easy to storyboard because it was like the same six shots over and over again. <laughs> So you want to tell them how we did the freezer, Zach? <laughs> so the freezer was a really simple, uh, cost-effective trick. Um, we got Nick's girlfriend behind there. She's rather small, so she's just shaking it, and uh, and it worked out great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a trick. It's a little trick of the shot there. It's a little bit farther from the wall than it looks, just enough to fit one girlfriend. <laughs> so this next shot I wanted to talk about too, about uh, how we had to achieve this shot which uh, we both were on camera for the shot actually and uh, I believe was I tilting and you were you were zooming yeah to get it so <laughs> Nick was slowly tilting um, the camera and I had a, um, a focus puller handle that I velcroed around the lens so while he's tilting I'm slowly uh, zooming in the camera and he's trying to focus at the same time. It took a number of takes to get it right. Several, several, several times. takes. And poor no cardio John uh, was running on that elliptical for a, a, a good like fifteen, 15 minutes, minutes until we had it right at full speed. Yeah. And I think uh, I think he was pretty pretty shot after that. But but we got it and uh, and and I like how it came out. Yeah, could, I think it could came have out been, really well. It could have been smoother, but I think it came out the best we could have done for yeah, sure. Yeah, I think a few more tries. <laughs> We could have definitely got it even better, but I think for the sake of John, yeah, it's, it's good think, for where it is. I think John was dead, so. <laughs> So if you guys can't tell, my mom's actually watching Shutter Island in the background while we were filming this. <laughs> you gotta use what you have. 
So getting John with that comedic timing was, uh, that was definitely something we, uh, we, we had to put together in that scene. Came out, I, I liked, I liked, uh, liked his timing. <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to say something. <laughs> really nothing to say till like the end. Till the end, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is fun because we just kept the camera there and he just changed and then walked again, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's an easy. Same with this one. We just left the camera up, and John just changed and then walked through again. I changed the coloring a little bit to make it look like it was a different day. <laughs> and this is a trick. The freezer's actually pulled a lot farther away from the wall. <laughs> Kelly again with the shake. With the shake. With the <laughs> In the timing, which uh, which we had to get down like perfectly on that, which I, th I think John did a great job. Um, getting the chains around <laughs> the freezer was uh, quite a project. There was there was no way to fit them all. That's why we it's cheated a, it. <laughs> it's a very close shot. There, there were no chains. There was just that one chain. Your brain does all the work on that. So, <laughs> and then these. Uh, so. These shots, we actually, um, so I had bought two of these um, Sansi um, floodlights. And so there, it comes with a remote for each of them and you can change the lights. So that's what we use for this bedroom scene. And then for all the scenes where the fridge is like red, we just put it, we put one just in the back of it and then just hid like the cord. Um, and it gives it, gave it a nice like kind of ghostly glow to it. It's cool because we got to use these colors are actually practical and then they were just touched up a little bit in the end to make them really like stand out. But that's really all we needed for it, which is what makes it really cool. Yeah, it was a really <laughs> just cheap light effect. So. Those are my slippers that John wore for the whole shoot. He didn't want to take them off. <laughs> And I like that we got the light on the door there. It doesn't look like that good of a shot, but like we had to set some stuff up for it. <laughs> and then yeah, there's the light behind the fridge there. And then we have, um, for this next shot, we put another light in the fridge. Um, so that way when he opens it up, it's a, it's a natural. You see this, yeah, this big glow here. Big glow, there's just a light in the fridge. <laughs> and it doesn't clash with the other light. So that right there is some of the space footage. Uh, we did a cloud tank for my final production for college, and uh, that's some of that cloud tank footage that's left over. That stuff's on here as well. We'll put a link for in, de in the description if you want to check that out. We might do a cloud tank tutorial in the future, possibly. But we had a lot of leftover footage, so we kind of uh, just spliced it in there. Um, all I really had to do was I uh, put some overlays of the freezer to get rid of the cord to make a, to, uh, I basically just copied and pasted and scrubbed out the, the cord from the shot and then I just overlaid the uh, freezer footage on and I had to tweak it a little bit to look like, um, but that's kind of all I had to do was just fo uh, get the cord out of there and then put this screener over it. And then uh, as for audio, all this music, we made all the music ourselves, um, I made it all in Logic, so this ending with all the screaming and stuff like that that's actually me screaming over and over again a few times and i did a little bit of pitch stuff to it and uh i i like overlaid it and i did some monster laughing where i laughed and then put like a monster deep voice effect on it so this whole the sound design in this end scene is actually just me screaming into a microphone by myself so it took a little bit to layer it all together but uh, it, was, it was literally just just me and a microphone so if, if you guys need to do something like this there's definitely ways to to get the stuff done do you want 
want to talk about that. Yeah, for yeah. A second. <laughs> I, th- I think that's a that's a good shot to talk about. Um, so we originally wanted John to get, or I originally wanted John <laughs> to get all the way into the freezer to just. I, I felt like it added more to the effect, which is the shot that I used at the end. But I don't know if we have any if we have any footage of it. I'll splice it over this of him falling in. Um, but he just kept falling in there and getting stuck in there. And uh, so for this shot, we did use the shot of him doing basically a handstand in the freezer. Um, And then we got him to go in a little bit further and then we just shut the freezer door and that's actually a separate shot there. So when you play it all together, it looks like he's going into the freezer because he was in the freezer at one point, but kind of your brain fills in the gaps as soon as the freezer shuts. It looks like he actually went in there. And got eaten by the freezer. So that's really three separate shots. One where he went in a little bit, one where he went all the way in, and then just the The freezer door. So that, that was a fun one to put together. So that shot's fun uh, because the slipper we originally didn't we originally have Kelly in the freezer? Yeah, she was she was in yeah. the freezer trying to toss it out, and out then Nick it. was behind it trying to lift it up. Um, but then we realized we can just reverse the shot. So instead of me having to put both of my hands on it and pull it out, I just had to close it after uh, Kelly threw it in. So we cropped it a little bit to get me out of there, but uh, but that's all it is. It's just Kelly threw the slipper in from the darkness. We closed the freezer, and then we just reversed it in post. Really simple, effective trick. So that's frigid. I just made that in Photoshop and put some stuff behind it. Uh, that one was basically a warm up, a warm up and a cool down project at the same time because we were coming off of uh, Rascals, which was about a half hour long. So that was kind of a bigger production. We had to put a lot of work into. Frigid was kind of an easy little cool down project because it was in one house, uh, only a few locations, based around one little set object. It was a lot shorter and uh, we filmed it all in one day. So I think uh, I think that one came out really good. Yeah, I think I like, yeah. And uh, that one is one of our wins for uh, the Hollywood Blood Horror Film Festival. We won back in June. Yeah. Just learning like how to practically light things. Light stuff, kind of yeah. Like, doing stuff kind of on the fly. Because we were trying to figure out like how to make like make it look cool but also with like just something inexpensive as this. And I think it worked out. Just kind of like putting the light in the fridge was just kind of an on the fly idea. Yeah. And I think it worked out really great. I, the shot where he opens up the fridge is like one of my favorite shots. Yeah. From, like the whole thing. I like that you get all that light on yeah. his face. It looks like it's coming from somewhere. And it doesn't clash with any of the other light. And I think that's something too that we really had to work through for that was uh, shadowing in your lighting and finding out where you actually need to put the light. Put the light, yeah. Not just like that the light needs to be there. Um, I think just another quick thing was just uh, kind of maximizing our time too. Because we really just kind of set up those few shots and had John change out of all his outfits and we were done with those shots. So I think that was a a really good test of just maximizing the time we had. What we would have done differently, given more time, I would have worked a little bit more on the effects. I don't think they take away from the film at all, but originally it was supposed to be like fire in the fridge and stuff like that. And there there was originally gonna be a whole kind of ending sequence that had to do with hell, quote unquote. Uh, but we just didn't really have the time to do it, so yeah. I, th- I think that's it. But I, 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 I might actually like how it came out better. One last thing I did learn from uh, filming Frigid this year, uh, I put together that whole Final Cut library and had it all on my external hard drive, but unfortunately I dropped it on our kitchen floor and it broke. So uh, the Final Cut I had of Frigid is the Final Cut you guys are seeing. I couldn't do any more editing to it afterwards. I had just exported that cut that night too, so we were actually really lucky or we would have lost it all. So just huge tip, back up your data, make sure it's always in two places, make sure it's always digital and physical. So if you do drop your physical copy, you can get it back digitally. Something I learned the hard way, uh, I keep all our files in two places now. Uh, we have a bigger drive account now, thanks to Zach. So, um, so yeah, just make sure your data is in the right place. That was a challenge for Frigid because uh, I didn't have a lot of tweaks I wanted to make, but uh, any of the ones that I did want to make, I couldn't yeah. anymore. So because the whole library was gone, so I can't even go in and get those sounds or anything. So, uh, so yeah, just be aware of your data and be conscious. And make sure you have it in two places all at once.
So the next one we did this year was Walter and Ella, which uh, is titled on screen as Baby Doll. Uh, that one we entered in the Roger Corman uh, first and hopefully last quarantine film festival that was run through Instagram back in April. So he gave uh, the contestants about two weeks to put together a film, put uh, filmed and produced entirely inside your own home, only using the crew you had at your disposal, so family members or anyone that was staying in, in your household with you, and everything had to be shot on a mobile phone. So I actually had written this short uh, originally for something else, and I decided to adapt it and make it a little bit shorter to, to just bang it out and get it done. It was probably the fastest we've ever written and done something kind of thing. I think I wrote it, and then within a few days I had to film it. So uh, it was it was definitely a challenge. Uh, I, Zach and I didn't live together at that point, so uh, I had to do everything in my own house uh, by myself. No one could even see each other at that time. That was deep in quarantine. So uh, it, was, it was pretty challenging, but it was a lot of fun to kind of put something together and actually have the time and energy to actually get all the shots that I wanted in in a certain time frame. So to put this together, it took about like 48 hours and then I did some VFXing uh, on my computer afterwards and I put it all together and I got it in for this mission deadline, which was like April 30th or something like that. Yeah, it was something. Um, so it was actually really cool. We put out Frigid on like the 20th and then we immediately had another production out, which uh, kind of motivated us to get, get the ball rolling even more. So, uh, so yeah, writing it was, uh, it just kind of came from just thinking about, I think, I think we were talking about AI or something one day and it just kind of spark, sparked an idea where it was like, what if we're, we're in the, we're in a, a time of our lives where technology kind of is really useful to us and is really starting to help us out and starting to integrate into our lives, especially stuff like AI and Google home and Amazon Alexa. So it's not super out of the out of the realm of possibility to imagine the next 20 years where we still have people who have this prejudice towards technology, but they have to rely on it in their everyday lives. So that time is probably coming very fast and that's kind of what this short is based out of. So we'll take a look at it. Oh, and uh, so I guess just to start, this is actually my grandmother's house that I filmed this in where uh, my, my house at home where I lived with my parents uh, was, we had our house and then we actually had an in-law apartment on the back because my grandmother had moved in with us about uh, 15 years ago now, about. <laughs> our, our grandma ended up moving in with us. We had to add an in-law addition onto our house and that's actually where I filmed this. That's why it actually looks like an older person's house. I didn't have to do a lot of decorating, just a little bit of de-decorating because she had some flat roof stuff out there that didn't really fit the character. Hello, hello. So that's actually my evening, Bluetooth Walter. speaker. How was your day? Uh, you know, long lines at the supermarket. Uh, too many people on the road. This fucking season brings out all the commies. I'm sorry to hear that. Would you like me to begin making your dinner? So I guess just to go over a few things really, really quickly. Uh, the costume I put together from just a few of my shirts, that's just a flannel and a dress shirt that I had, and some rosary, be rosary beads I had from when I had to go to CCD back in the day when I was a kid growing up. So I tried to put together kind of an old person outfit. The, uh, the, the glasses I have uh, on my own, the hat itself I had kind of as a joke, um, <laughs> and uh, the, the, the white in my beard is actually baby powder, so all I had to do was take kind of a paper towel and, and douse it in baby powder and then puff it into my beard, and uh, it gave me kind of an older look. And then as for the Bluetooth speaker, that's a Bose speaker, I just set it down as uh, basically a set piece for the whole short, and in post afterwards I just made sure it was on a tripod the whole time. I had a little mobile uh, steady cam that I popped the, the, the mount off of that and screwed it onto my DSLR tripod. So I threw my iPhone onto that, set it up in all these positions, and just went through all the lines. And making your dinner. Uh, yes, please. The pot roast with the fresh asparagus, if you will, on the table by, ooh, let's say, let's say five o'clock. That's, That's all my grandmother's mail. Of course, sir. And can you register baby doll as your new response activator? I'm sorry, sir. I can't do that. Ah, never mind, never mind. In our five. That's a Motion City soundtrack vinyl. And this scene is fun too. Hey, baby doll. Because we had some leftover uh, steak or meat or whatever in the fridge. And for the sake of time, I didn't cook any of it because I was just going to be chewing it for the scene anyways. I wasn't actually eating it. So between these takes, I would chew the cold meat and then spit it back onto my plate to make it look like there was still food there. So... 
Uh, it was kind of, it was, it was, it was, was kind of a bad shooting process for this scene because I was eat, I was just chewing cold meat and then like putting it back on my plate to make it look like I still had food there. So that's it's indie filmmaking. Hey, baby doll. Ella. Yes, sir. Roast overcooked. I'm sorry, sir. The roast was and that is real whiskey. 160 degrees Fahrenheit, garnished with parsley and assorted spices. Ah. The roast should be cooked fully and should be tender and seasoned to your liking. I'm, I'm telling you, woman, the roast overcooked. It's tough. It's flavorless, and frankly, it tastes like shit. Sir, with all due respect, the roast was cooked to perfection. If I were to prepare another, did I say I wanted to swap again? Open your ears and listen to me, you stupid fucking box. I actually want to pause just on that last shot when it shows uh, from the side because I put Ella back in the scene in the background. I thought that was a good, it's a very small short, but I thought it was a good world building thing because we see Ella on the counter and in the beginning. So the viewer could possibly assume it's the same device, but it's not by showing that shot and showing her in the background. I don't know. That's just something that I don't. I I, I like that detail. Shit! Whatever you did to it ruined my fucking appetite. Just run me in my bath and get this shit out of my sight. Yes, sir. Right away. Fall detective. Ugh. Would you like me to call the authorities? Vocal confirmation required. Baby doll. Please. I'm sorry. Vocal confirmation declined. <laughs> so just quickly, all these noises that you hear when I fell and I slipped and stuff like that. So some of those sound effects were from Final Cut. Uh, some of them were that some that I recorded on my own. The slipping I actually had to do on my own. I had to bring my camera into the bathroom and get some audio recording of me slipping on something. But the bone breaking and stuff like that were just sound effects I, I found through Final Cut or free online. Call an ambulance. Vocal confirmation declined. Cool. Do you want to talk about the uh, the process of making the voice and the text on the device? So for the text for, for Walter and Ella for that little device, all I did was make sure that all of those shots that I got were st uh, still and on a tripod. So basically once I had all of those uh, all of that steady footage, I just dropped it into Motion 5 and I masked over it with some like rounded rectangle shapes made them black and made them look a little bit shinier to make it look like a screen. And then from there, I took the text that I needed to write, so the lines that she was saying, and of course the, the little Ella logo on the top, I took that text and I just overlaid it, made it a little bit neon, made it that blue color, and from there it was just animating it. So the timing I had to go by the footage that I had, whereas the actual text itself, I used a text animator to have it write itself out, which you can find in Motion 5 or After Effects. There's uh, little text animators that are in there that can help you. So all I really did there was have it fade in, uh, sit for a second, and then fade out. Those are just three little animations I had to do there. It took quite a bit of time, especially because I only had four or five days to do this, so that took up about two full days of editing. Obviously, it could have been better, but with the time that I have, that we had, and uh, with the submission itself, I think it uh, came out uh, pretty damn well. One thing I learned from this short was uh, that, basically, <laughs> working in Motion 5, uh, working with text, um, I learned that even though you have all the time in the world and you're on a set, you still might not be able to get everything you want done because that's just kind of how filming is. So, um, and one thing I would have done differently is I would have set up my camera a little bit sta more stable, would have made sure all those shots were perfect because like I said, when I banged the table a little bit, tripod was a little bit too close and it kept shaking. I wish I had some way to kind of monitor that footage while I was doing it, but I did it all on my iPhone. Next up we have uh, When a Black Man Walks Home, which is probably like the bigger one we did this year, I'd say, Yeah. especially because of the message behind it. Um, this one was very quick to put together. Uh, we kind of had to think on our toes a lot. It was very timely and I'd say even controversial when we put it together at the time. There was a lot of different messages running around the internet and uh, there was a lot of stuff going on on social media. It made some people mad. 
it made, it made it made a lot of people upset um and even now our likes to dislike ratio on the short film itself on youtube are still at like 50 percent each but this is kind of something that we kind of felt like we needed to do i think just because there was just so much shit going on uh, over the summer and there was just so many people that had just the wrong information that they were putting out there and there were so many people that were mad about the wrong information and there were so many people that were expressing their emotions just the wrong way and just hurting each other and it, it was just we were, we were kind of sitting there and we were thinking about our shooting schedule for the next few productions and we were kind of thinking about what was going on in the world and we really just thought we, we can't really do anything else right yeah. now. So, um, so that's where the idea came from. We do have a whole behind the scenes video for this short. Uh, we'll leave a link in the description. I'm sure the card's popping up right now, right there. I'm sure over there. I'm in the corner, aren't I? Yeah. So, it'll be over there. so it'll be over there. So, uh, so if you guys haven't seen that, please look into that. And you, if you, if you want to know more about the production, please look into that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where the idea came from. The world was just kind of on fire. Just to do something we knew wasn't going to change. <laughs> the world but it was still kind of to get some kind of messaging out there in, in, in addition to the kind of activism that we're already trying to do anyway in our own lives this just felt like something that just something we could do together you know? yeah it was it was like what can we do right now so this is kind of what we came up came up with. so um so writing it was pretty straightforward. I mean, the idea kind of spoke for itself as soon as we kind of had the conception. I put together a script in just like one night. I'm pretty sure it only took me about like two hours to sit down and write. And then I sent it over to you and uh, Xavier and you both kind of gave it a once over. And I think we tweaked like one or two things Seems, yeah. and, and just made sure it was like authentic and felt good and felt like something everyone was comfortable with. And then we just kind of, from there we got on set, I mean, we put together the set in about a week and we got everyone together like the next week yeah. and then uh, we shot it and I put it together. I had it done by like, I want to say the 6th of July because there were some festival deadlines I wanted to get it in for. So uh, that was very fast, especially because we had just gotten all our new equipment in and we had never worked on it before. So it was like, what better way to get used to our equipment than to just make something. So, um, so yeah, let's take a look at it. I just wanted to point out that this was the first time we kind of came out. We had an intro. We kind of had a some kind of brand behind us when we put this out. I'd say something just a little more legit. Looking. Yeah, I, I think I think so. Um, and it, and it looked good at the at the Mystic Film Festival. As we talked about before, Marjo describes an entire issue of self-actualization. So in this case, physiologically, has to be done. Do you want to talk yeah. about the, uh, <laughs> how you created this? Yeah. So yeah, so this, this intro was kind of tricky to get the timing right. Um, this was actually in the original script too, which, uh, which I think is cool because, uh, I think I think to get I think there was like kind of a a full scope of an idea behind the script and I think it kind of came through basically what was written on paper. Um, so putting putting this together, I just had to scale the video all the way out uh, to get the timing down. I had to actually clip it a few times, and that's hidden by all this scrambling that's going on. So um, I basically just had it scale up uh, through keyframes. So I started it at zero, keyframed it to maybe 5%, maybe 10%, maybe 15%, and just I had to time it myself that way. Once I got the, the timing kind of right, I actually exported it again, and then, and then I put a speed ramp on it. So it, would, uh, so it would start to get a little bit faster as it was going. And then after that, I put the, the like bad TV signal effect on that. That's something that's just built in in Final Cut that I threw on there. And I just tweaked it a little bit to make it get uh, more clear as it as it came in, and same with the audio. I put a muffle modulator on that as well, and had to get clearer and clearer as it came in. This I just thought was kind of important for the production too, because I wanted to feel like we were kind of tuning into something, like this story existed somewhere, and we were kind of just looking in on it from somewhere else. So I think this kind of sets that mood in the beginning. So that was kind of important to me 
um, in the in the beginning. And and something I thought was really cool is when we were at Mystic Film Festival, when it started like this, a lot of people started like leaning in and trying to trying to focus on it. So it, I think it did kind of do its job. It draws you in right away. Yeah, yeah, I think you're so. trying to figure out what's going. Yeah, on. what's going on? What am I looking at? So. Um, so yeah, that's just how I did it. Just with some speed ramps, uh, a little bit of scaling, and some keyframes, and then just a few more effects. And all that stuff is built right into every editing software. Uh, the human connection we've been talking about, you know, self-esteem, self-respect, uh, the minds need to be accepted by its community. These all really don't come into play until your basic functional and security needs are met. And that little speech there I actually recorded after. But it is good that you recognize these things about yourself. It'll make it a little easier for us to start bringing you out of your shell more. I'm sorry we have to keep meeting like this in my home office. Uh, I, would, I, would have, I would have hoped for us to be back at the main facility by now, but with uh, the whole quarantine thing going on, this is just how we're probably gonna have to meet for the time being. So I guess just a few things. We've talked about the set design in the uh, behind the scenes video. So if you, again, if you guys haven't seen that, uh, we talk about that a lot, but that's basically just stuff we had lying around the house and that's my basement. So we just moved a bunch of stuff down to my basement. Uh, it took several days. It took uh, a lot for the clutter. Those are some trophies from my childhood, some colored pencils, some various books. Yeah, and... books. A lot of that schoolwork from when I was uh, in college that we just kind of lined the shelves with. Um, and yeah, just some stuff <laughs> that paintings from my grandmother's house again. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it was just kind of a bunch of shit that we just put together. It made it look like it was just <laughs> somebody scrambling to put an office together for uh, because they couldn't be at their main office, so they had to make a do a make makeshift one. Yeah. So I think I think it worked out. I think it looks like something. Which, which is kind of cool because like we had to do it anyways. Yeah. But then quarantine was happening at the same time. time yeah. So that's kind of how it tied into two things at once, even, and we didn't even have to make it about that. Yeah, it was a so, happy accident. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely something that worked out. And how have these demonstrations? <laughs> these displays going on outside, how have they been affecting you? Have you given them any thought? So I guess like here we can talk, uh, you want to talk about the lighting a little, Zach? So the lighting was kind of a unique situation because we only had the one light bulb in the ceiling. So we set up... Which was terrible. Which was, it was also, <laughs> yeah. So we set up these Christmas lights around the set. Um, which also just kind of helped with setting the scene and the mood, but the also helped ambience. light. Yeah, but we had these. We had two photography lights um, that we set up um, on the sides behind the camera, and I bought um, gels that are normally for a smaller light, um, not a <laughs> photography studio light. Um, so we just duct taped the the gels inside um, the box. It didn't melt it because it's meant for hotter lights. Um, instead of fluorescence so it but it changed the color of the the scene and that's how we lit and then we kind of mixed gels to make different colors to make the mood just like right for the scene I thought that was a cool part is where we because they weren't big enough for the lights yeah so, uh, like I think on one side it was purple and yellow I think or yeah. something and you, you taped them together and you taped them to the box and I think yeah. that, and that then, gave and it. the other one I think we had like just orange maybe a red in there too. yeah so it gave this kind of dreamy look to the scene when we were filming it yeah. too that like I kind of tried to pump up a little just in post and that was kind of all the coloring I did in the scene because the colors were already there so I just kind of amplified them and so. that's kind of like we took that from like what we learned from Frigid just to just like evolve our practical lighting as much as we can uh, physically but also financially too <laughs> I mean why wouldn't I niggas been getting killed in the streets the whole country's on fire. Someone's gotta do something, right? Yes, it does seem to be getting very... And I just wore a suit jacket and Rough uh, there. Xavier wore what he had on that day. But I hope you won't forget all the so. work we've gotten done over the past Free few Free costume months. design. <laughs> it's not Indulging hard. Indulging in such reckless activities, surrounding yourself in an unsafe environment with unsafe people, 
may very well set our progress back and leave you feeling vulnerable. I do respect that. I'm always vulnerable. This is uh, this is my favorite shot of the whole thing. We'll wait till it's over. <laughs> I would just hate to see you get hurt during all this. I think it would be best for you to just lay low and stay out of it all. So uh, that shot right there is, is probably my favorite shot of the whole short. Um, it's something that again we like learned from Frigid that, and and even Walter and Ella beforehand. I think I think even more so there that uh, this was filmed at home again. So we had the time to actually plan out our shots, shots for once. Yeah. So like I said, we got brand new equipment in, and we were kind of just spending a few days messing around with it and testing it and seeing what it looked like. So we actually had a full day on set, like before that we just sat there and like framed stuff up. Yeah. And I was actually looking through my footage and just deleting stuff and getting rid of old stuff. And the first few shots I had were the same shots we basically used in the short, just framed up practice shots from beforehand. So that's something I that you can really do is just maximize the time you have, especially if you're alone and you're not wasting anyone's money. You go out there and shoot whatever you can, yeah. basically, just get comfortable. And so that's something that the, every shot in this was absolutely planned and absolutely meticulously picked out for a reason. And that's something that we don't normally have the time to do. And especially when we we'll get we get to it, um, the the big one take, the big the one next scene after this, which was definitely a challenge. Um, I think that that was the the perfect take. It, it goes from that first shot all the way to that second shot, and we have all that time in the middle. I think it helps us kind of introduce the viewer into the fact that we're going to be doing longer takes in this yeah. short too. It almost kind of alludes to what's coming. It's like a pre uh, prerequisite to like what's yeah. And I guess just quickly to touch upon the music, uh, that's that I that was all made originally. Uh, we make all our own music. All the music you hear in this is going to be original. But this particularly was a little bit challenging to do because I didn't really know what direction to go in for scoring. So I kind of decided to do classical, more violins, make it very I mean, intense what, what for the scene. But also uh, that guitar streets. comes in over top of it to kind of have like a little bit of sweetness to it, Someone's which is something, something right? that uh, I, play, I played over it. Yes, I had to find kind of very... what I was looking for there. I slowed it down a little bit. I, I mished, pulled, moved Rough stuff around, yeah. and uh, I think the sound design came well, out. I hope you won't forget uh, all the work we've basically done over the past. great for what we needed it for, I think. Um, I think we could have done a little bit more mastering and made it pop a little bit more. But other than that, I think uh, that's something that I, I, I like tried to do was make sure that the whole scene was scored, not just a piece of it. So, and especially because there's there's no music until the the last section of the of the right. short. The whole next scene has no music. So, I'll try my best. And that's just like a final cut sound effect. <laughs> And this is just outside my house. This is my neighborhood. So. <laughs> so this was kind of like interesting to kind of orchestrate um, because it's Nick on camera right, and then Good. How um, about Kelly, off, she's How holding you the mic off, and then I'm holding the light. Okay. So we kind of had oh, to all headed? work in unison so to home, make man. sure everything was like oh. lit and that we could get cold. sound and that everything oh, was like right in focus well. and so like every single piece of this we'll, we'll pause it so so like every single piece of this was we had all worked basically in unison we were yeah. kind of one unit as a three-man crew which uh which was kind of funny especially because uh kelly running boom we had a i mean she was strapped to me because the, the we were plugged right into the camera, camera we were pr yeah. plugged right into the xlr port so she was she was stuck to me, and then you were kind of stuck to me on the other side because you had the light. So wherever you didn't go, I couldn't see. Yeah. So so we were kind of like smushed together as like almost a one man unit. If you like taped us together, um, we talk about this in the behind the scenes, but um, we had all these shots planned out for the scene to kind of bring it together, and all the shots we needed to actually get that kind of emotional resonance from the scene. And I was looking at it that afternoon, literally the afternoon before we were shooting. We we were just waiting for it to get dark. And I was like, I don't want to set up 60 times, times yeah. in the middle of the street. Uh, why don't we just figure out how we can do this in one shot? 
So uh, I there, I do have a picture of the diagram. Yeah, it's in the behind the that scenes, we, but I'm sure we can throw it up here too. It's in the behind the scenes. It's terrible with stick figures, but we planned out we're going to start you know, close on worm, pull back, go through them, follow them, follow, and then we just kind of followed them till the end. We planned out exactly what we wanted to do, exactly where we needed to be, and it was actually, I think it was a lot easier for everyone on set yeah. too, because... It took a lot to get it down, but I think it, in the long run it was easier. That's It was a lot. And, it, and it's another one of those things where it was a happy accident, the situation, with doing the long take... But also having the singular light capture the whole thing, I think it really helps kind of drive home the point that this is like somebody's like kind of daydream yeah. or like nightmare of like what's happening. Yeah. Because it looks dreamlike. It, it's, it feels like it's not You reality. don't know where, where the light's light is coming, coming from. from. Yeah. You don't know. So it just really worked out that... <laughs> there's, a, there's a few points where we, we rack in and out and it just feels... It just feels like you're in someone's head almost yeah, it watching feels it happen. less structured than the previous scene. Um, especially, and um, it was great for the actors too because instead of having to have all their lines and say them over and over again through like thirty different shots, shots yeah. instead we really just rehearsed it probably like five or six times. Everyone got really comfortable with it, and then we just ran it. So uh, the first half we got down pretty fast. The second half was a little bit more a little challenging. challenging yeah. There's we had a little more choreography in the second half of the scene. Definitely uh, getting making sure that Worm didn't get hurt. Uh, when we were all kind of scrambling, because yeah. that was—I mean, he's—he's he's a big dude, so he's not gonna really get hurt yeah. from us. And make sure but... like all the other actors aren't getting hurt because yeah. they're taking falls and and we're and and I mean at the end of the day, someone's jumping on someone else, else. and yeah, so and it's we don't just... have money for stunt coordinators. <laughs> and... So just making sure everyone was comfortable and safe, and uh, and yeah, so that's kind of how we put the scene together. It was very fast. Uh, Roberto and Carl did a great job. Roberto, we only asked like days before we shot <laughs> to, to be. To be the cop, we were literally going to a, a record store, and we were like, "Hey, Roberto, you want to play? You want to play a cop?" <laughs> this first shot that the police car is actually Carl's uh, Kia Soul. I had to key out the Soul uh, logo in post, so all I had to do there is I just took a black rectangle. I actually made it a little bit less than 100% uh, opacity because it looked a little bit shinier that way, and I just put it over the Soul logo keyed it frame by frame and you uh, in my opinion you can't even tell yeah. it's there so um especially that's something too that was really cool with this new equipment is uh filming in like true black and true colors it was a lot easier to do vfx on these shots because the colors are kind of set in uh in perfect white and perfect black right so, right um so yeah so let's watch the the rest of the scene <laughs> Done. i'm sorry is there a problem officer is there a fucking law against walking or something man well no there's and no Xavier really made it his own with how he how he spoke and how he how he moved and how he acted too. I really liked that. That stuff that didn't quite jump off the page doctor. when you read it, but when His you see him on screen, it, you really feel like he's like there. You? No, don't fuck it sound like me, man. I'm literally on my way home. Bro. Hey, 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 take it easy. We can just get you in the car here. Take you downtown to the station for some questioning. But what, 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 what the fuck, bro? No. And then yeah, adding just, the heartbeat, bro, I just went getting inside his head. Making it feel more dreamlike. The background kind of disappears. We have a suspect resisting arrest. Suspect resisting in downtown. No, I'm not. This I like, chopped a frame there for when Roberto hits the ground, so he hits a little harder. That's a that's a real flashlight we had. Carl just swung and missed. This looks a lot more intense than it is. It's really just. Roberto and Carl had no power. <laughs> Let's if uh, if Worm wanted to break free, he could have. <laughs> Let's make that clear. And so this whole sequence here was very uh, challenging to put together, especially because it's it was uh, it was in the original script. It was a little bit uh, more showy in the original script. There was a little bit more to it. Um, a little bit more dreamlike too, but it just didn't fit the tone in the end. So I found some of this uh, campaign footage, uh, some of this archival footage. I found it online. It was free, free to use to the public. So I, I grabbed some of it, and uh, watching the footage was was kind of hard because it's it's pretty intense stuff, and it's it puts a lot of the stuff that's happening today into perspective, and that's why. Once we put the short together, we were thinking of dropping this whole sequence and just zooming out and coming back to Worm immediately and showing that it was in his head. 
but it felt like it was missing something. Like it, it felt like it didn't say enough, or it, there wasn't enough there, or there wasn't enough space to to make you believe that Worm was actually Xavier was actually gone. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think once we added this footage in, it kind of adds uh, another layer to it, and it adds like not only is this what some people are experiencing and thinking day to day it's been around for hundreds of years yes, yeah and it's it's there's a lot of history behind what people are feeling now and that's kind of the big uh the big point of the short is like people are feeling this and they're right to feel it because there's a lot of history behind it and that's what's important is all the history behind it it's and to kind of put all of that in a visual kind of sense, cause sense. Like, one of the biggest goals that like I particularly wanted to do and like I think we wanted to do is have like a production that if someone was trying to explain how they felt to someone they could just point to something like this Some, yeah and say you want to know how I feel that's how I feel so yeah so that's where this this whole thing came from and the music itself was actually pretty off the cuff I wasn't gonna use it originally I was just kind of mashing keys on my keyboard and then uh, we, it just kind of fit so So this other footage we used was from a friend of ours who had been to a few protests. We just asked him if we could use it, and he sent it over. He said absolutely. Before we get to the end, I just wanted to point out putting together this sequence was uh, was a little bit deliberate. Um, that footage that was sent over to us by our buddy who went to some protests, uh, lining up those shots next to each other, using using what we had was absolutely what uh, part part of the production. So we didn't have perfect shots or anything that we needed, but matching up some of these shots together to have them really reflect each other. Like, one of my favorite images, and it might be very quick, but there's uh, the, the women holding the sign that are like, keep Alabama white, and then we show the footage from nowadays, and most of the protesters there are white. And, and then especially those last few shots where it's this huge chaos, and there's, there's, there's dogs, and there's, there's cops, and there's people screaming, and then we show someone's drumming like in that other shot you can hear it and they're they're just walking and they're peacefully marching and i think that's just i think finding the shots that worked well together even from the little bit of footage we had was very important to compiling all to keep the duality of like then and now yeah also show the kind of this the the similarities yeah yeah having them all fit together yeah so And so just for this shot, um, I took some of that audio from the clips. I put some echoing and some muffling on it. I had to get louder and louder as uh, we came out of uh, Xavier's mind, basically. Um, the police overlay of that police light, we originally were trying to do that practically, and we were even thinking of buying a small like police light to, to flash on him at the end. But then we found a tutorial online that was great, and we'll throw a link to it in the description if we can find it about um, how to do that overlay. And it, it's a great video. Basically all you do is there's, uh, they, there's a police overlay that the uh, creator of the video made. They have it online. It's just this flashing light, uh, red and blue. And all you do is uh, throw it over your clip, change it into an overlay, and it basically does the rest of it for you, yeah. which is really cool. Cause, and, and it looks incredible. Yeah, it, it looks legit. It looks yeah. like, I remember showing it to uh, Kelly's cousin, who's a police officer, and she was like, oh, wow, did you guys get a light? And we were like, no. And she's, she was like, that looks real. Yeah. So, I mean, we got 
approved. Approved, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We do talk about putting together the costumes as well and the behind the scenes, so we're not going to touch upon that there, but everything in the production was basically put together by hand. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, so if you want to more, know more about that kind of stuff and some other uh, intricacies about making the short, check out the behind the scenes video for When a Black Man Walks Home. How's it going tonight, sir? This is just the same clip played over again. I'm, I'm good, officer. And yourself? Yeah, then Xavier just repeats himself, uh, a little bit more scared. Some people took that the wrong way uh, at the end. Um, but he is supposed to be scared. And this was supposed to be a little stylistic for the ending. And then... This is all audio from the Birmingham campaign footage that we got. So, just to kind of tie it all together. It's very easy to do. Just attach the audio, throw it over your credits, and a little bit more atmospheric credits. And then the logo again. So yeah, so I mean, I think we kind of talked a lot about what we learned on that. Um, I mean, we I think we learned most of the stuff we used for the rest of the year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, we learned time management, uh, rehearsal, like strategies. And then, you know, like I said, just the practical lighting. Just the lighting. Where to put the lights and just kind of figuring out using the lights to set the mood and kind of like how much or even most or like how little to have. To have. Um, set design was a big one. Set and costume design. Yeah, because we had never ones. really done anything like that and before to this kind of like scale. Extent, yeah. And I mean, we had to put cos. We had to sew them together. Kelly helped sew them. Um, you know, we had to put the desks and everything together yeah. in the room. Um, if we were going to do something differently, me mainly, I would want to do some sound mastering. Uh, when we were at the Mystic Film Festival, that whole chunk at the end is supposed to be loud and overwhelming, but they mixed their sound system that that was the, the regular level, like that was baseline level. So the rest of the show was very, very low. So people couldn't hear very well. Um, and that's that's basically just, I didn't pay too much attention to sound mastering. It was uh, something that uh, I did, all we did all on our own and uh, we put together and it kind of killed me by the end of the night. I didn't even really look into it. I wasn't too worried about it because to me stylistically it made sense. But, um, but I could see how having a cohesive production that doesn't dip too high or low is, is, yeah. a, is a big deal. So um, that's something we're trying to keep in mind moving forward. So uh, next up is up north. Up north is kind of, it was kind of a different production we did because uh, because we filmed it all in one day, again, like frigid, but we were kind of all over the place that day, which was fun, um, but but challenging again. Uh, up North, I had written summer of 2019, I want to say, right after we did, right after we did Rascals. I, I sat down and wrote a few shorts. Up North was one of them. I loved the idea of kind of someone traveling cross country with a body in the back of their car. That was just the idea. And uh, it became the twist at the end and the conversation in the middle kind of was supposed to strengthen how how this character is and how he manipulates people into getting in the back of his trunk. <laughs> so I think that's kind of the best way to describe it. It's kind of a, it's a weirder one too because it has much less of a purpose than kind of anything we've done. Yeah, it's just, you're just watching somebody's day for yeah. eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a lot sleepier of, of, of a short than uh, than we normally do. Um, so it's kind of interesting. It uh, It's probably, I think it's a little bit more of, of, a, of a thinker too, which I like too, because you can there's there's a few hidden things you can watch, uh, watch it for. There's a few little Easter eggs. Uh, Zach has two cameos. Uh, which you guys might not know about one of them if you've seen it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, writing was pretty easy. It was very simple. The uh, the idea for the cake was pretty organic. Uh, it actually came from me just writing the conversation between them. And she was just like, you gotta try the cake. It was, it was just kind of a throwaway line. And then it was like, oh wait, that could be something. So why don't we incorporate that a little bit more? Levi in the film decides he wants the cake and it's just, uh, just a little bit of a manipulation ploy to uh, to get on our good side, so maybe you can come back for her. 
so yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's up north. Uh, this was <laughs> this was a little different too because we uh, actually casted for this quote unquote. Um, Tyler Shand, who plays Levi in the production, I went to a uh, community college with for a little bit before I transferred to Westfield State. I took a few acting classes and me and him met uh, during the, the first acting class that I took. So he actually went off to New York to continue his education as an actor. Um, this is something that we had kinda, I had kinda seen on social media. We had kinda kept in touch a little bit. Um, and I just decided, hey, why don't we source out and get uh, you know, an, another person who knows what they're doing for this so that we don't have to be on camera. Um, we can just be the camera for once. Uh, so, so really it was, uh, it was, it was very easy to do. I just, uh, hit him up with an email said, Hey man, uh, it's been a while. You want to get together and shoot something? And he was very excited about it. He said, he sent an email back, uh, this, the same day. And we just, we, uh, collaborated, we connected. I sent him the script and it was, uh, bing, bang, boom. Uh, there we go. We were filming. So don't ever be afraid to reach out to people. It, I guess is like the number one thing. The lesson. Yeah, the lesson. The lesson for this is if you think someone's good for your production, don't. I mean, an email costs nothing, and the worst they can say is no. And most of the time, they're probably gonna say yes because most most people like being on camera. So, <laughs> except for Zach. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> we got forty minutes. Forty minutes. Yeah. Just trying to cover everything because we haven't done anything for this. So yeah, that's. That's the actual intro uh, with the audio behind it. This is the first time we actually used the full thing. Um. These locations were cool too because we just spent a day or two just driving around looking for places. And a few of them I had already kind of had in my head. And a few of them we had to figure out. Yes, that's a real peeing sound effect. No, it's not me or Tyler. <laughs> some of these shots were added afterwards to fill space too. Um, I went back by myself to get some pickup shots later. The coloring especially, we wanted to pop. Um, it was unintentional, but Tyler had sent us a few wardrobe options that he had on hand. And uh, I picked the purple shirt because I thought it kind of fit the best and it really became kind of a centerpiece of the whole production. So there's not too much going on, so we had to do a lot with what you were seeing. So I guess to cover the whole production, uh, we just shot this, like I said, in one day. Um, it felt almost like a vacation project because we were just traveling the whole day and we didn't have to really sit anywhere Lord, for too yeah. long. Um, that's Tyler's uh, brother's car that we used, so uh, he brought that with him to set. He drove it to set, uh, and I just jumped in. We filled his gas tank in the actual gas station scene. So uh, we did that one first. That's where we went first. We filled up his gas tank, and we drove around all day and shot. So that's all we did. We I just sat in the passenger seat, got in the back, uh, we grabbed all our shots. We met up with Zach about halfway through the day and uh, our other actor on the project, Jess, and uh, we just banged the scene out, got it done, and uh, kept filming, and we were done by late afternoon. Late afternoon, yeah. So at sundown, we were done. Yeah, so, I mean, this was, it, it went very smooth. It was a great, great experience on the camera again because we just picked it up, ran out, we were running and gunning all day, and we didn't have to worry about how our footage looked because we were filming in broad daylight and everything looked great. Yeah. So... <laughs> So yeah, that's how the car scenes were done. We were just driving. That's also why they're a little bit rougher. Uh, we didn't have a steady cam or anything. It's just me sitting in the passenger seat. So, but I think it kind of adds to it even. This was one of the last shots of the day. <laughs> that's why it's the sun's going down. It's supposed to be coming up in the short. This we did, uh, this we'll, we'll <laughs> pause for. So this is uh, a windy road in uh, my hometown. And... Uh, Zach's car this, has. Uh, I have a I have a, a sunroof, and so <laughs> we got lucky on this one. It was pretty lucky. Uh, so this is just me driving, and then Nick is out <laughs> standing and uh, out the sunroof. I think I was. I think my feet were in the back, and Kelly was holding on to my legs. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. And so I poked my head out of the sunroof with the camera. Camera, yeah. And, and that's <laughs> how we shot these higher up outside scenes. All, all of these, uh, f this this whole scene, the, the whole follow car scene is just me poking out the window, window. With, the, with the camera. That's also why they're kind of rough. Uh, I did the best I could to stabilize them and cut out what was unusable. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how we did these. And uh, we had just finished shooting and pulled into the parking lot at the end when a cop drove by. Uh, so I think we and I actually pulled into the parking, parking lot. Parking lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A cop pulled right into the parking they lot behind us. walked right to my car, and I thought, <laughs> like, this is it. But then the, the, we were at a, um, a river, and people weren't supposed to be in the river. So she came there to kind of tell people to she, get out. She was yelling so. at the people in the water, <laughs> not us. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily. But um, uh, but me, it was funny, I, too, because me and Tyler had to go finish filming stuff. So I jumped in his car, and we, like, scrammed. And, and like, the cop came in, and we were like, oh, I hope Zach's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't recommend it. No, we yeah. Got lucky this time. <laughs> yeah, I'd say if you're gonna do it too, get a stabilizer or put a mount on your roof and clip your camera into that. Because this footage came out pretty rough, and I had to do a lot to pull it back. And I, I even think it's still pretty rough, but uh, it's the best we could do. Um, especially with keying out the license plates, I had to key out the li uh, Tyler's uh, license plate, which I had to do all by hand, frame by frame, and just the shakiness of the camera made it horrible so yeah. it was a terrible terrible experience keying out these license plates um this was all added to uh later i was i was actually driving and filming don't tell anyone um and so <laughs> so those little uh like masks and vignettes that were added i just felt like looking at the trees wasn't enough it needed a little bit more uh the idea behind the short too was that tyler had taken this route before so these are supposed to almost be like photographic memories he's he's remembering he's stuck in his own head he's thinking about stuff uh he's driving through and then he hits the bump and uh that bump was from a different road <laughs> that we had to do somewhere else it was in the cemetery so uh so yeah that whole scene was really just getting inside of tyler's head that's why those effects are there they weren't in the script originally yeah and there's zach <laughs> <laughs> And that song was written originally for the production. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, this is actually fun too. This is a noble gas station. I don't know, depending on where you live, you might have noble gas as well. Um, it had this really interesting green look. Everything there is green. Uh, I popped it a little more, maybe a little too much. The colors are almost overwhelming in this short. Um, and there were noble gas signs all over the place. So I had to key them all out by hand. Uh, there was one right there above the pump that I had to throw a layer over and just key out. Everything that said noble gas I had to key out, but it was pretty easy because everything was on tripods anyways. So uh, to do that, like I said, just take a layer. Uh, I made a rectangle, uh, made it very, very small keyed it over that, uh, keyed it over where the logo was, made sure it was the same color. You might have to use a gradient because because uh, of the lighting. In a few of these shots where Tyler's hand goes over it, I did have to key it with his hand uh, frame by frame, which was definitely a pain in the ass, but uh, I, you gotta do what you gotta do to not get sued, so. And there's my cameo. I decided Westfield State University could stay because I paid them enough money. And this was easy too. We just rolled up and we were kind of worried that someone was going to yell at us, but no one did. I just like set my tripod up and we just filmed. So. So that is quick, but that's Zach's other cameo as a. Uh, Blubberin', blubberin', blubberin bon, Bobby Bones. Uh, as a radio star. Uh, there is a little hidden Easter egg in there as well where they kind of talk about uh, Levi who had come down in the past and dumped some bodies. They're starting to find the bodies now. So there's a little bit of a quick uh, blip at the end of that radio message. It was just trying to drop more clues for the audience. I figured it was pretty clear, but uh, yeah. just, just dropping more clues and more hints. Just trying to, that wasn't in the script either is the, is the point.
And so, yeah, so this is uh, the Country Diner uh, in Enfield, Connecticut. Uh, they were great. They, I called them up the day before, asked if we could come down and shoot something. I asked a few other places as well. They didn't get back to me fast enough, so we ended up at the Country Diner. Uh, we just showed up. It was still quarantine seating. That's why there's so much outdoor seating, which worked in our favor. Yeah. Because uh, we didn't have to go inside and deal with anyone. Uh, we even asked them to shut the music off outside, and they did. We didn't think, like, I was afraid to ask them, and they actually asked me if we needed anything. Yeah. So I was like, if you wouldn't mind, and they were very accommodating. I think they liked having us there for a little bit. Yeah. And, and then, uh, I mean, that was it. Uh, we just showed up. We met Jess and Zach. She had already gone over the script. Uh, so her and uh, Tyler sat for a little bit. They rehearsed together, and uh, we got going. That, that was something that was great about this production too is we didn't have to worry about acting and our actors were so good we didn't really have to worry about them yeah. so <laughs> that's very rare for us is that we just had to shoot so <laughs> all these props are from home just water bottle took the label off basket from home sandwich I made no, she has she has a fanny pack. Oh, sorry, from I didn't home. mean to startle you. <laughs> Looks like you've seen a ghost. No. Not yet, at least. Well, can I get you any dessert, maybe? The chocolate cake here is to die for. It's my absolute favorite. Ah, uh, I definitely shouldn't. I uh, I think I'll just take the check. Oh come on! It looks like you've had a tough day. A couple days. You're not from around here, are you? How'd you how'd you guess that? License plate. Up north? Yeah. So that shot, I just want to talk about it because I spent so much time on it. I had to key out the make and model of the car on the back. So I had to key that out with uh, with just a rectangle and some, some coloring. But because I had already racked in the shot, it didn't work. Like, it, the, it, it went out of focus and yeah. the, it was still on top. So I had to actually cut that, take a screenshot of it, key the, key the logo out, and then I racked in the program. I used the focus... Uh, effect and just put the focus all the way up, keyed it, put the focus all the way down. So that was just because I had to spend that time on it, I had to say something. Um, also, one thing we learned if you're filming to near a road, you're gonna get car sounds and you're gonna need to put better car sounds in later because they weren't loud enough to match the audio, but the audio were plagued by car sounds. So the audio was very rough in this scene. I had to do a lot of work to pull back, and it's still very rough. And every time a car went by, I had to put a car effect in. So all those car sound effects are hand put in. So enjoy that sound design. Oh, that's so cool. We don't get a lot of your folk around here. Visiting family or? No, nothing like that. Just had to get out. Car sound. Nice long drive by my head. Finally, bury some things. Had to know? put a car sound. That's so neat. I've always wanted to travel cross country. Just get in the car and drive. I like the lighting on Jess's shots there. Not too. As yeah, that was cool, sounds. coming through the trees. But it was definitely needed after this year. Well, I hope you have a safe trip. I'll go get that check for you. Thanks. Actually, let me get that cake. And then the teleporting man. <laughs> who uh, we didn't want to ask Wasn't to move. wearing his mask over his face. I think he owns the place, so I didn't want to ask him to move. <laughs> <laughs> and so this was a fun little thing. This is just me filming from the back seat to get these close-ups. And then he's, we were just uh, at a park nearby. And so I got out and got the cake shot. He had to do it a few times, but. Same with this, just another park we just turned in. Uh, all this stuff was around town or neighboring towns. Uh, the farthest place we had to drive was like 20 minutes. This last shot too uh, was a little interesting to do because uh, I wanted the grass to look a little bit deader. So the, the coloring in this shot, uh, the grass was a little greener in the original shot, and a lot of stuff was a little bit greener. But uh, I wanted it to contrast all the green from the whole shore, and now we're at the part where the dead body is. Um, and then that uh, last license plate shot took forever to key out, especially because of the unpredictability of the bouncing of the trunk. So same thing as everything else, I just put a rectangle over it, and I keyed it. Uh, I, I think it looks rough still. It still really hurts me to look at, but everyone says like they don't notice it, so I don't... 
I mean, it's one of those things where only you notice it. So. Unless you point it out to somebody. Yeah. Nobody's but, really looking there anyway. But it bothered me. It bothered me. I was so ashamed of the short when I put it out because I couldn't get it, get that one little bit perfect. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, uh, my girlfriend in the back seat. Uh, all three members of Bay State make an appearance in the short. <laughs> and we, we wrote an original song for it. So all these are sound effects. Uh, the whistling is our buddy Carl, who's been, who was in uh, When a Black Man Walks Home. And uh, I just had him come out and do some whistling one day. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's basically it. I mean, <laughs> it's a... Uh, yeah. Really quick and easy. Yeah. And like we said, uh, just filming it was quick and easy, too. Um... Only took a day. Uh, I think we started at noon, maybe like one. And I think we met you for like four? Four, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it was so hot that day too. It was like 98 degrees out or something like that. And we were working with brand new equipment that was running hot. And like we were in a car and I don't think T Tyler's uh, brother's car had like good air conditioning. Yeah. So we were just like, we were just sweating all day. In between takes, Tyler would take the long sleeve shirt off. It was, I felt bad. Like I was, when, uh, when he sent me those costumes, cause he was like, which one do you think looks good? And I was like, I hate to say it, but the long, long sleeve. sleeve. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but no, Tyler was a great sport about it. Uh, we're pro most likely going to be getting together to do something again soon. Uh, things we learned, uh, running and gunning is okay, as long as you know your footage is going to look okay. Have a plan when you run and gun. Yeah, make sure you have a plan. Uh, having actors that know their lines is great, too. Always good. So that's taught us that. <laughs> taught us um, some stuff in the editing room, some of the coloring stuff, uh, some of the audio stuff. The, uh, the only music in that whole short is just a few little violin cues and uh, that song that we wrote. So we wrote that doo-wop song. It took a little bit to do and master and, and mix together and stuff. But other than that, uh, I think less is more is something else. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very quick and there's not a lot going on in the short. But uh, I think it it kind of sticks with you for a little bit. So uh, things I would have done differently. Uh, maybe some of the car roof stuff. I mean, I don't think we could have done it differently. No, I mean that was as best so, as we could have got it. Um, gotten it with what we had. Yeah. So just stabilizing stuff. And uh, the license plates. I would have taken the license plates off the car. Yeah. Which yeah. we couldn't have done given our setup, but I would I would have done it for at least the last shot. Yeah. So uh, always pay attention to license plates and what's going on in the background of your shot. So next up is uh, 790 AM. So next up is 790 AM. Um, right. So, uh, 790 is kind of based off this idea that I've had kind of kicking around for a few years about this, like, young woman who kind of goes off to college and she kind of, like, parties and does a lot of drugs and she kind of starts to, like, hallucinate and sees, like, all these different things, like aliens, and eventually, you know, she's convinced that she's been impregnated by an alien. And so I really didn't know what to do with it, that idea. And I kind of wrote, wrote a lot of it down and I just felt like there's something there for a short film. I kind of morphed it because everything that I wanted to do would basically make it a feature. Um, so this is kind Which of- Which we could still do. Do, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of just a morphed, I, 790's a morphed idea of that. That would be an interesting feature. Kind of an feature. offshoot, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it would be kind of akin to like um, the Babadook where you're not quite sure like if the, the mother is just kind of if, if there projecting. Is a projecting, or if there really is a Baba Duke and everyone's just okay with it. Is she seeing aliens, or is it just grief? Grief. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, so writing it was really interesting because it it went through like three drafts, and I could have done another one, but kind of like with anything, you just kind of have to eventually just say this is done. Because <laughs> I. <laughs> 
you know, because like, <clears throat> I, I think a lot of people just can just feel like they could just continue to evolve and write something, but and then if you but if you keep doing that, you're just never gonna get yeah, it's not gonna you're come never gonna out. shoot anything. It's not gonna come out. Wow. <laughs> so you just kind of have to decide you're done, and you just have to go with what you have, and then you know you can evolve it while you're shooting and in editing, but you need a base to get something going to jump off to jump to off. Some, something to start shooting. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so it took me, it took me a little bit because I was just very indecisive and I kind of wanted to bring some of those ideas from the feature into the short, but I felt like I wasn't, I got self-conscious, I guess. I was worried that some of it might be too weird or too out there. Um, but I guess I can talk about I think we could have gone weirder. Yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> looking at it when it was all done, I kind of wish I leaned into it because there's a lot more things that I wanted to say, but got nervous that it wasn't going to come out as as well as I thought it was going to because of the weirdness and mm -hmm. everything, it would get muddled. I was afraid mm -hmm. it would get muddled. So it's a very, I guess, uh, more... It's like... Uh, this is a cleaner cut. It's like a no-fat version. Yeah, this is a no-fat, no-frills uh, version of the original <laughs> idea. Because um, the original draft, it, um, which it didn't even make it to the original draft, it, it deleted a lot of it. Um, it just wasn't there. Like, there was a whole thing. There, it really leaned into um, the baby... Mm. Uh, her having an alien baby. An alien baby. baby. And I just felt like that might be too much. I think I remember you saying something about that when we first started shooting. Yeah. Um, um, and then any instance of that that was left when we shot it, I kind of got rid of it in the edit. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff is gone. There is a little bit of it. You can hear a baby cry in one of the dream sequences, but that's yeah. really about it. Yeah. Um, I think something that's cool, too, knowing now that this started from a place of like a party girl hallucinating from drugs the first draft you had sent to me and to, and to kelly because we well we didn't know who we were using as our actress to, yeah to we start. kind of as you'll see i guess just a quick you'll see that we kind of use people a lot just because it's just who we have available but also just with the pandemic and everything it's not really the smartest to bring yeah. all these different strangers so it's, it, it's it, it definitely narrowed our our group it of was actors. important to, it is important to keep like your bubble like Small, small right which now. we could we'll do another video about how we shoot during the pandemic yeah. but i guess just a quick aside um but uh but yeah just when you had first sent the draft over one of the uh initial edits we made was to make the the drugs a little bit more center focus center focus yeah and be and have oliver be like well are you experiencing something or is this are you on your meds are you not on, on your meds, meds? Yeah. like yeah. that was kind of so to hear that it came from there to, to get to here is interesting yeah so yeah um, so I guess we'll get right into it. So we'll start off here with a quote from Dr. Stephen Greer. Um, I guess just a quick aside here, I'll pause it. So <laughs> I'm very interested in UFOs and aliens and the whole thing. I've been researching it for the past few years. I'm very much deep in on it. Nick, not so much, um, but a there lot There is of life <laughs> out there. There is life out there. Is it this? That, uh, continue. It is, but, so, <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the short is, um, is real cases, if you want to call them that. Uh, allegedly real cases that I've just, that have come up in my research and from watching documentaries and things like that. So if you're into ufology, there's a lot of little Easter eggs and things that you can pick up in here that are really, if you know, you know, type things. Um, so we have Dr. Stephen Greer who is a uh, ufologist. He was a surgeon who gave up his career to try to bring the light of, bring bring to light the the subject of what the, uh, the government knows about UFOs and aliens and things. And he had a hearing um, on September 12th, which obviously got muddled by the day before. <laughs> so you kind of notice right off the bat with the quote and with the music, it kind of, the idea was just kind of draw you in. This is something mysterious. What is going on? And then also to um, there's that great Superman logo. There's that great Superman logo. <laughs> um, also to you know I uh, I'm a big fan of 70s and 80s horror. Um, so it's just the whole thing musically and sonically is just a big throwback to um, that era of horror that uh, was probably one of the greatest eras we've ever had. In Story-wise, and well, horror. this will be a whole other video. <laughs> they, <too. yeah. laughs> um, I can gush about horror later. So we'll talk about this freeze frame for a second. I love a good freeze frame um, <laughs> because they can, they're they're very versatile. Um, 
here because they can just be strictly a stylistic choice like here um, but then also too like in films like the 700 blows or jewels and Jim it's it's, you, it's used for story purposes to kind of visually communicate what the characters are feeling and, and the overarching story but um, and in the breakfast club and in the breakfast club um, but here it's just a style <laughs> choice because I again 70s the whole era of 70s movies I'm a big fan and they just did that a lot and so we keep on keep on trucking I get to be the comic relief on this one. <laughs> this new age of politics will be the downfall of America as we know it. They're coming after you. They are. And mark my words, it'll be a cold day in hell. A cold day. When I give in to these adrenochrome harvesting bastards demands. Chris and I are the only ones in So, the media. a quick aside, I just want to um, give a shout out to everyone who did voice acting on for the radio parts. Um, you guys did amazing an amazing job and kind of the whole point of why we're not seeing our character's face and we're just hearing audio and just seeing driving is it's just to really so you can focus in on what the radio is saying um, because it sets up the character. It, it tells us about the character automatically that she's listening to uh, well she switches off the conspiracy radio um, <laughs> but you know later on like when you're talking about the light and it's, it kind of gives um, Nick's character kind of like well you're listening to all these different kinds of things that's going to influence what you see and what you think and everything some and of it, that mean world theory in there yeah so it kind of she's like no this is just it's just in addition to I'm really seeing all these things and shout out, because this was a few of our uh, voice actors' first time doing something like yeah. this, too. So they did a great job. It's up for the Patriots to stand up for America. Remember her? America? The radicals sure have it. I warned you this five years ago, and I'm going to warn you now. Be prepared. It's us versus them. Look how quickly they wanted you to And also, like, any chance to make fun of, like, conservative talk radio, like, crazy <laughs> guys like Alex Jones... Is, is, you know, is, is always a good opportunity. Also, once again, this is just a road by my house. Yeah, this so. we, just, we, we drove out of Nick's neighborhood to a road by his house to drive back into Before Nick's neighborhood. Break, so, pretty easy lighters. shooting location. This was just me holding the camera, Kelly driving, and then Nick reading the script out loud so that way later in editing I can line up where the voices are supposed to be on the radio. Real patriots, like Super you, simple. and we're working for real Americans just like you. So, if you go to our website, www.pillsforamerica.com. Save 30% on our testosterone raising and life enhancing pills. <laughs> I use them, they work. <laughs> you should have left it. Tonight, you should have left it. We traveled I think it needed, I think all the weirdness needed to be. The greatest stories ever told. Then later, the cold case of a Connecticut killer and one doo wop song. What are the connections? So that's just a quick little Easter egg to up north that they take place in the same uh, universe. If you guys haven't seen, we're building in uh, a, a, a cinematic a, universe. We're doing the SMSCU here. Um, <laughs> so all of our shorts uh, try to have little nods to each other. Each other. Even though it might not make any much sense. sense no. Even though Nick is in most of them. <laughs> it's, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Uh, I mean, American Horror Story did it. Yeah, so. that's fair. That's fair. I, the orb, the orb from Rascals yeah. connects that's it all. It, it's, it's, that's what that connects cool. the whole, uh, so it we'll, really we'll have to the, do something on Rascals, too, to show. <laughs> to show that. Thank you, Craig. My hope with this publication is to get the, the point accent. across <laughs> that we are all connected Shout out to, to Angel a single source. From that strange show. Every single human being. The point of dying is to learn. Every lifetime we live is a lesson. The source wants us to know this. That's a really profound thinking. When we come back after the break, our interview with Dr. Masters continues. So that, that last voice you heard um, was someone that I hired off of Fiverr. Um, which, I, I bring this up because like, if you don't have friends that are that do voice acting, willing to do voice acting or are voice actors, Fiverr is a really good and inexpensive um, option. Um, so for his whole thing, it, it cost me like $8. There's just always ways to do some, something. something. There's yeah. always ways to do it. Obviously, if you have an option to do it for free, 
do that first. Pick free. But if not, you know, Fiverr is a great resource. He's actually the only paid actor on, on uh, yeah, these for- productions, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out. On your right, too, you'll see where we filmed uh, When a Black Man Walks, walks Home. home is that That's uh, that corner right there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to talk about this song, maybe? Um, I just felt like so I was looking, I was looking for just different classical music because I knew it, it is kind of a sci-fi trope with the classical music yeah. and the alien abduction and the stuff. Yeah. So I just, I just always, it's really dumb, but I really just enjoy that. Well, trope. It, 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 it had to be in there if you were trying to Tr- yeah. trying to hit them all. Well, yeah, yeah. So. so I think it works. So I was trying to find something that wasn't like. I've never heard this song before. No, I hadn't I, heard it until when when I read the script and the song was in the script. I was like, "Damn, Zach, what have you been listening like, to lately?" <laughs> like, so I just been like, I spent like maybe twenty minutes just listening to different classical music um, pieces, and I came upon this one, and I just needed something that wasn't well known and wasn't like too on the nose. Mm-hmm. That felt like something that would be played some like on some like Beethoven a, would have been too much. Maybe maybe even yeah. some Vivaldi might have might have been a little too much. Yeah, so just something I, I don't even remember the name of this <laughs> of who the composer was. Um, Shout out to that composer. Yeah, but I just felt like it fit. It yeah. just it just felt like it it's was something frantic. that would be played on an AM radio station. Yeah. And then this trick is a lot of fun. Um, oh come on. So next to the um, on the bottom of the st- we're in a Kia call- Soul. We're again. in a Kia Soul. This <laughs> is the second Kia Soul. We're in my Kia Soul. There's two and souls. There's a switch um, near the the driver's side door. It's a little dial where you can turn the um, brightness on the uh, the console uh, up and down. And so that's what Kelly's doing. She's just driving, and then she's just kind of <laughs> she's flipping, flickering, flickering the lights. It's a really cheap. Actually, it's not even cheap. It's an, it's, it's a it's, it's a zero free, dollar. Yeah. I mean, if you have a car, if you have a car, yeah, a car that does that. But it's a zero dollar effect, and it worked great. Yeah. Um, because originally I was trying to figure out how I can do it in After Effects, but then I realized I can just do it. Do on it set, in yeah. The car. Yeah. So I guess that too. Just if if you can do it practically, do, do, do it, it practically. practically. Practically, it always looks better. better. Yeah. Um, shout out to Kia Soul, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if we can get some money. <laughs> We'll drive souls in every production. <laughs> My neighbors were just like, what, uh, yeah, what, what you guys we're doing? We're still in Nick's neighborhood here. <laughs> so this is kind of, this is the abduction. And then we can see the radio dial again, another kind and of sci-fi gone. trope. But it's a trope, but it's also true. Part of the story. Keep it moving. <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> so again, another like great public domain song that just kind of works. Some great acting. I'm playing nothing, by the way. <laughs> you gotta come see this. What is it? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but you gotta come see it. Let's go. I think something too. I don't know if you want to pause, but something too that's uh, kind of cool about, I guess, this whole video in general is we've used my house in almost every Everything, single one of them, yeah. and we we haven't used the same location or the same shot. Yeah. So just, I mean, you can use the same room, just shoot it a different, different way. Different way. Yeah. Exactly. So. What's this all about? I was driving home and the lights kept turning on and off. Your battery's probably dying. Let me finish. There was a bright flash and then I think this was the first the clock, thing I shot, looked at the right? clock. It was after eleven. Yeah, this was the very, uh, yeah. this was the very first thing. Your battery's probably dying. You probably just left work later than you thought. More. I can tell by the beard growth, unfortunately. <laughs> I was growing it out for fridge or er, for chlorine. Well, first of all. You're listening to AM radio. You're going to pick up different shit from all over the place. And second of all, this is the fourth time this year something unexplained has happened to you. What's going on? 
So that line there is also kind of alludes back to what I was saying earlier about kind of leaning into the baby thing um, because it takes... So, this isn't the first time. If this isn't the first time, and according to other women who have been abducted, if... keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it in the documentary. Uh, it 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 um <laughs> it's multiple times. So that's kind of what that was a remnant from when I was leaning into the baby, um, alien baby. We'll do the alien documentary. I'll I'll do completely scientific. <laughs> you can do everything you have. <laughs> This right here is another easy effect. Um, it was just kind of tilting the camera into the uh, the bed so that it's black. And then when we were outside, um, we just, just coming down. We just cut. So I had the camera upside down, and I was sitting down on the on the road, and we just pointed it out of my leg. So it's just a really easy transition. This is another shot we have to do together. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was holding the camera and Nick was focusing. Yeah. Somewhere. So Zach was sitting in the street and I was leaning over him trying not to. But I think the shot came out great. Yeah. Zach hates tripods, by the way. <laughs> Except here. <laughs> Took a look on your hood. Actually, isn't this your battery is fine, but so you need still, an oil change. This is your. So still, we shot this on your camera. So we still, <laughs> you're still clear, Zach. You yeah. didn't use your. <laughs> <laughs> We're still good then. You don't believe me, do you? I'm gonna be honest. I don't. I had and a dream last night. This year, we had to finish filming after we moved. So uh, yeah. my, mom, my mom's still in the house, but we're up here uh, in the Boston area. So we had already moved and we had the, the apartment. So uh, as you can see. See, yeah. We had to Frankenstein <laughs> the locations a little bit. So it, it is kind of splicing the two together. We go kind of from a house to an apartment. apartment yeah. But, and there was a big wide shot of the house, but I cut that out. So, so that way it would make sense to the apartment shots. So now we had a baby. <laughs> What? I know it sounds crazy, but it made me smile when I woke up. So that's why a little bit of this is cobbled together. It's we use goldfish instead of a burrito. Yeah. Story. Just had to do pandemic came back into play in the holiday season. And... Would it make you feel better if we went back to the spot where it happened? So this is kind of like goes back to what Nick was saying about up north when you when you're at a location and there's a ton of cars going by you have to um, just really make do with what you have. So this is all we had to do all ADR um, because the audio we had was just was unusable I basically. I woke up. It was a My it was, was a messy racing. day. <laughs> I felt dizzy. I heard a voice. Interference. It was in this language. I've never heard before. We came all the way out here. I listened to this. Can we just go home? Why can't you just fucking lie to me? Why can't you just fucking pretend for once? You want me to lie to you? I feel better than I do right now. Maggie. Maggie. We had a second cameraman on that one, too. Shout out to Rocco. Shout out to Rocco. I think that was the first time you ever held a camera. Yeah. <laughs> So this scene also kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier, where less is more. I'm sorry where for how I acted there earlier. was supposed to be another setup, but this angle just felt sorry too. pretty you sufficient, kind of and it just kind of fit. It felt right. It felt right because they were just kind of boxed in, and I think to switch to another work. angle to break up um, this one just didn't. I don't think would have yeah. made the scene as like strong. Right. I think these like long white hallways are a good like yeah. sci-fi staple too. Yeah. It looks like a cramped. Uh, like a try for kids. Even though it's just a real place, it gives it the feeling. I just don't think we're ready for that yet. And we we can barely afford the rent for this place on our own. I don't really think we should bring a kid into that. 
We can figure it out. And also, this scene is just talking in a hallway. So, I, I mean, still think it'd be smart don't, right now. Doesn't really need much. Yeah. So, I mean, nothing fancy here. Don't uh, again. Less is more. Don't be afraid to just have those moments. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so I guess I'll talk about these quick shots that were spliced in. So, um, I had made an alien costume. <laughs> which I have the footage maybe we'll put it in it was accurate it, <laughs> it was anatomically accurate <laughs> so we had um, John um, who was our faithful actor who was just down for anything he comes back for every production every production him and Carl him and shout Carl. out to John and Carl um, and I I just I just felt bad that we didn't use a lot of the footage that we, we shot, shot with him. Yeah. And so I was... We had a whole night where we went in the backyard and had him crawl out of the shadows. shadows and, and just all this different cool stuff that just didn't really fit anywhere. Um, <laughs> so I felt like I just needed to add a little more of John. So he's in these quick little shots with the alien going back into the darkness. And it kind of helps with the following scene. I like the, the, the light too because you can kind of barely see him. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, that's a kitchen from Frigid. So, just literally shot a different angle. If you watch it back to back, you'd know, but otherwise... Otherwise, yeah, you don't really think about it. And again, too, with the music here, just kind of keeping it when in, just like this 80s style, just very heavily John Carpenter bass, vibe. Full bass, no drums. No drums. No yeah. drums. <laughs> just bass and synth. When we were making music for this, it, it, it tripped me up, uh, and then I got it. No drums. <laughs> so i'll pause it here because this is kind of probably some of my favorite stuff that we did so um how we shot this was there's another room on the other side of that window leading to my grandma's apartment so we took the photography light that we used for when a black man walks home we just kept it fluorescent we didn't put any gels in front of it um and we just shone it through the window so that way the water bottle and like everything that's on the table is practically lit. It got all the light. It got all of the light so that way it kind of just helps to sell the scene yeah. more than yeah. if we didn't have that light. So this is a practically lit scene that yeah. was then modified in post, well, post to look yeah. uh, a little bit more cerebral. And this this beam was really easy. You just I just 3D tracked the, uh, the window in uh, After Effects and then you just kind of... It, you, pick a point and you just make a blue box and you mask the, the windows mm -hmm. um, and then the blue box becomes in the mask and you just add the um, the radio blur and then you just point the beam and you just extend it and you that's just find a place for it yeah you just find a place for it and you get this this effect. whole yeah. room effect yeah. that yeah. looks like we did that to a whole room, room yeah but it's, it's really like a, a expensive effect but yeah. Yeah. get it, get it. Oh. And then this, um, I almost didn't include this. This was m m supposed to be shorter. Um, but again, I just kind of, was like, I just, there was already aliens. There was just a blue beam that came through a kitchen. I guess it just lean into the weirdness a little bit. I'm just upset because we had plenty of cloud tape <laughs> that we already had. And then again in there was just a really quick shot of John that I just needed to put somewhere. You don't hear that? Have you taken your pills? You seriously don't hear that? Alright, that's it. We're going to the hospital. It's coming from out there. Meg, please. I'm really trying here. Just do it for me, please. 
Let's just go, see what they say. Just want you to be well. Okay. I've been thinking about what you said. God, I look huge. About us having a kid. <laughs> I think we're on a diet, okay? <laughs> Maybe it'd be nice. And then this was just driving girl, around. Because really like I knew kid. this was going to be all ADR. What do you um, think? So we just drove around and I just sat in the Aggie? back and shot stuff and just, just placed them together. They're here again. Who's here? Let me out. With Maggie. It's Kelly's great ADR. <laughs> <laughs> This again is just in uh, right where we shot, the, where Black Man Right on that corner is that <laughs> corner again, yeah. So that was um, that was kind of an interesting effect because um, it's still not perfect, but I was able to hide it. I warped a lot of around the mask that I needed because um, it's just a freezed frame mm -hmm. that's just masked, and mm -hmm. then I just animated it up, and then in After Effects I added. Um, can make points for puppetry mm -hmm. so when she's moving up her arms are moving back but i Word. warped it because i it just wasn't didn't look right so Word. it just it just added to the effect so it you can hide things mm -hmm. that's something too that uh that was a street light so yeah uh that's where the light came from again so that was also practically lit that uh zach did all the vfx over and there's the other kia soul <laughs> And then just here's Carl again. Hey man, did you see that thing? <laughs> that was incredible. I ain't never seen nothing like it. I think I got it on video. Did you get any of it? I didn't even realize that at first no. that they're both Kia Souls <laughs> in this shot. <laughs> nothing. Dang, well, that's a real shame. She's huge. Incredible. <laughs> and that was another one that we actually had a few angles for. Yeah, but just again in editing, it just the wide was just enough. <laughs> this was shot later at Fuck! the apartment building. Apartment building, yeah. <laughs> this so we start I wish use a 35 millimeter so it was close um, so as I'm moving the camera down towards um, the radio uh, Nick is slowly moving his hand to turn the <laughs> dial I had to sneak around <laughs> it <laughs> we had to get the perfect like timing with it I still had to cut a little bit because you could see some of his thumb but it works <laughs> When the news conference began, Symington announced a break. And so in the case. I kind of always just enjoyed Here's like what when like we just kind of get different little things that pertain to like what you just saw, like yeah. clips or something. So that's kind of like what all of this is. Yeah, I like that. It kind of makes it seem. Uh, it it almost does a little like world building. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like we saw this like close story. Now here's like what it could be. Like. Yeah. And then that is uh, 790. Yeah, yeah. 790. So uh, what uh, would you learn, Zach? I think I learned a lot about. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot about myself. Oh, we, and the friends we made along <laughs> the way. The real 790 AM was the, the friends, friends we made, made along the way. The real abduction. Uh, <laughs> it was um, my heart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I just learned a lot about like visual effects. Yeah. Um, which was like the big thing because I've never done visual effects work before, like yeah. at all. Yeah. So that was cool to learn it. Um, just basically from the start, and now I have like all these different skills that yeah you know, that, that you I learn learn by doing doing yeah basically Literally. and uh, just kind of like it make me want to try to do expand what else I can yeah. you know, try out visual effects wise. I think that's cool too because all of the stuff, all the VFX stuff, other than uh, I guess in Rascals and a little bit in Frigid with the Cloud Tank stuff is really just like to touch stuff up or get rid of yeah. logos or stuff like so this was actually something where there were visual effects, effects yeah. like there was light there was you know stuff moving 
So that's something that, uh, th this was the en our end of the year production and it kind of had a little bit more, uh, goomba to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. There was, there, there was a little bit more, uh, action. Yeah. I guess is the word I'm looking for. Especially coming off of up north, which is a very kind of sleepy shore. And then we came right to 790 and there's there's stuff flying. Yeah, there's so. a lot of there was a lot of moving parts to it. And then also too, just kind of you know, just going in with a plan, but then also like time permitting, uh, just experimenting with different things. Yeah. Um, and like we were saying, that was a big challenge with this short particularly too, because we finished filming up north in the middle of the summer. We just, uh, I, just the editing process on that took a little bit of time. So 790, we really were just doing in the fall, which oh, is yeah. when all the doors closed and everyone started quarantining again. And like, you couldn't go anywhere again. Everyone cared about their masks again all of a sudden. So, so it was like getting together and getting this stuff done was a little bit of a challenge, challenge yeah. at the end of the year. Yeah, to kind of like coordinate like different schedules and things like that. Yeah. So it was kind of- Who's quarantining when? And when, who's, yeah. Who's doing what when, so. Um, something I would do differently is to guess, I guess maybe not second guess myself so much to kind of just write um, what is just there and <clears> then <throat> trim down. And go weirder. Go weirder yeah. and just kind of, I guess, trust your instincts yeah. a little bit. Because you can always just like, it's easier to just take away stuff yeah. than to just kind of like add yeah. stuff, you know. I think that's something we learned from doing all the productions this year too was that um, like, I tried not to take any liberties when I was writing. I wrote around what we had, but if, if we wanted something to happen, we figured out how to make it happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's something that going forward we'll be able to do more. Yeah. Um, especially, we'll, we'll find a way to make it happen. Yeah, because, like, so. I know, I, I, like it, I like this how it is, but I do wish I had leaned into making it more weirder. I think we could do another extension yeah. of this. Maybe not even, maybe not related, but we could do another one yeah you know what i mean i think that would be really cool yeah so yeah that's uh, 790. uh so we're just gonna go over a little bit of shooting chlorine uh we'll watch the trailer real quick and then we're gonna wrap up for you guys all right so the last thing we filmed last year was a uh, short called chlorine it was uh, something to round out the year. We actually started filming it in the middle of the summer while uh, my pool was still open. So uh, this was another thing that we just worked around what we had. It's it's uh, very similar in structure to Frigid where we kind of had a big set piece or a big uh, kind of object that was almost a character in itself that we tried to work around. The idea came from literally I was cleaning the pool one day. Everything you see in the the beginning of this short when it comes out, I did almost every day. <laughs> this summer, every other day, I, did, I cleaned it and got it ready to swim in. Um, so that's where all the ideas came from. We had a fence taken down, and when I turned and looked through the fence, I could see straight through to the road. And it kind of creeped me out because I saw the corner, and I was like, what if someone was standing there yeah. watching me? So that's literally where the short came from, was I was cleaning the pool, and I looked, and I was like, that'd be creepy if someone was standing yeah. right there. And then everything else just kind of fell into place from there, and taking it in a, in a direction where um, there, we are kind of trying to say a little bit with it, where it's also, but it's also a lot of a lot more fun because it's a haunted pool so um, it's kind of a companion piece to frigid yeah it, it feels like a spiritual sequel uh to to frigid for sure it's the uh, taking that story expanding it uh adding some more characters and making it a little more dynamic so um filming it was uh pretty smooth it was probably some of the longest days we've had i think because yeah. like the first thing the first day we shot the whole beginning and all the pool stuff in one day and that was like over 150 shots i think or something like that putting that together was insane um but but yeah just setting up i i think we used a lot of the stuff we learned on frigid and when a black man walks home and 790 and just learning how to use our time and use our setups to our, adv our advantage setting up once and getting all our shots that that camera needs to be there for yeah all at once um john was there to help too so he was a great help he helped out with uh, setting up and, and getting things in place and of course he was in the scenes so um so yeah i mean uh just setting up getting things done we filmed this in kind of two big chunks there was one big chunk in the summer where we did all the pool stuff we did all the night stuff in one big chunk and then we did kind of the rest of it in like 
three days. days yeah. I did some stuff on my own, and then we met up and did the rest of it uh, at Zach's place. So when uh, so yeah, so it's still being put together in the editing room. We wrapped at Thanksgiving. Yeah. So uh, that'll be out whenever we can get it done. It's still there's still a lot to go through in there. There's a lot of visual effects we're working on. Um, a lot of the stuff we did wanted to do on set didn't work out quite so well. We bought some dry ice for the pool because we wanted some fog. The dry ice didn't. It was a little lackluster for what we wanted to do with it. Um, so we're gonna we're trying to work through some digital effects there and uh, just syncing up audio and kind of the effects at the end. So um, so that'll be out whenever it's finished. Uh, we we put the trailer together. Uh, so far, um, I really like this trailer. I, yeah. I spent a lot of time on it and. Did, one of the main things I focused on was audio design for it. So, and I tried to make it look kind of as real as possible. So we'll just take a look at it and point some things out, basically. <laughs> So I guess even just to start right there, right out of the gate, I know it's short, so I might not even, might not even bother pausing it, but, um, some of those shots of uh, in the pool are just me with that Steadicam uh, with the with the iPhone mount on it, and I just put my iPhone on it, put it on the Steadicam, jumped in the pool, and then grabbed the Steadicam. Uh, I was pretty scared I was going to drop my phone, but iPhones don't die from water anymore, so it kind of eased my feel uh, my feelings, and uh, I think the pool shots came out cool. Yeah. We got, we got a few of those, so. And this is just pointing out that it's kind of like frigid. We needed more text. I think I look like a jerk, but. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that shot. Raccoons broke into the shed earlier. And what's funny too, what's funny too is uh, my neighbor actually asked my mom about that. They were like, hey, someone was standing like looking into your backyard the other day. Is everything okay? And they didn't know we were filming. So I thought that was <laughs> funny. Julie got out of her crib. And there's She's Zach's niece. Shout out to my niece. Kara, I watch her all day when you're at work. <laughs> Sorry about the way everything went down back. Truly, I am. Leave me and my family out of it. Sometimes I think you care about that pool more than you care about us. So yeah, that's coming. Um, that pool shot at the end, I kind of toiled with putting it in the trailer or not. My brother thought we should save it for the for the short film, but um, in my but in my opinion, uh, I kind of wanted to show it off for a second at least, so people come for the pool. Yeah, like, that's kind of intriguing. Yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. Because I feel like you see that, and you're like, "What what the hell is this?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I like how that trailer came out. It's a lot faster paced um, than than a few of the other ones we did, and uh, yeah, just trying something new every every time we film something. Yeah. So yeah, that was. Uh, we'll we'll probably talk about that in in another video, video when it comes once out. it's done. So uh, so I guess just just for preliminary, uh, some something I learned was uh, you know pay attention to your effects. Uh, we worked until like four in the morning or like like three or four in the three morning four, yeah. on the on the night shoot on that last night. So uh, we learned a lot about uh, night shooting, we, the, which we've done a lot of this year. Uh, we did a lot on Rascals last year too. Um, we learned a lot about uh, keeping your effects together and timing with that stuff, like um, just like getting in, getting out. Uh, John went in the pool once at night and he was dead afterwards because it was so cold. So uh, it was the end of the season, we were closing it up and we needed to get everything done before uh, before we closed it. So I think, I think that's actually a, a big one was just learning when to shoot and yeah. how to shoot the most efficiently possible. That's one of the big things we learned last year is just 
uh, getting in, getting your shots done, getting out of there. And that's, again, we only had a few days before the pool uh, closed and we got it all. So um, we had to make sure we got everything done that night. Uh, something I would have done differently is uh, I would have had audio rolling for the for the end speech with the pool because it's a nightmare syncing that audio up when the pool when the pool itself is muted. I can't actually get them lined up, so that's something that's taken a while. So um, and yeah, I mean just a little bit more organization, yeah. maybe uh, a little bit more uh, audio recording. Uh, other than that, I think uh, I think we'll just finish that short up, so you guys will see that. So yeah, I guess just wrapping up the year. Uh, what would you think, Zach? <laughs> I think we had a very like I, I I think we had a very productive year. I think we learned a lot. <laughs> I think yeah, I think we took everything that we learned from the last thing and just kept like, applying, kept it. applying it. Yeah, and just did that throughout the whole year. Yeah, basically. and that's that's something that like I I really wanted us to 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 work on a lot of stuff last year because when we go in to work on a feature or something longer, we're going to have all these skills. Yeah. And it's going to be like, it's going to be a challenge, but we're going to have all this experience. We're going to have yeah. worked on our equipment. We're going to know it inside out. That's why, again, once we got all our stuff and once we both got our cameras in, it was like, let's go shoot something. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it was productive. I think we learned a lot. I think, uh, I think we have a lot of stuff to show for it. And I think we have a lot of stuff moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a few tips. Uh, uh, maximize the time you have. Uh, set up once, get all your shots, set up again. Uh, organization, writing, just the more you the more you do of it, the better you get at it. Uh, I think is a lot of, a, a lot, the, a lot big, of it, yeah. the big takeaway from 2020 is the more you work, the better you get. Uh, looking at frigid to uh, like the the last few cuts I've seen of like chlorine, like the the amount that like we grew last year was was pretty it's pretty big. Pretty significant. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty significant. And um, even just learning how to frame stuff better, and even learning how to color stuff better and light stuff better. It's just yeah, just trying out different things. Yeah, and just seeing if it works. Yeah, especially if you're working on a few different projects or and you have the time to do it, you yeah. can mess around with stuff. And if it doesn't, then at least you know. Yeah, and and you, you you're gonna learn something. You'll learn, you'll learn something no matter what, as long as you're doing something. So, so yeah, that was our 2020. Uh, check us out on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. We have a website out there now. It's uh, supermoonstudios.business.site. You can go on there and uh, request a quote from us. That'll be a more official link in the future. We're just getting everything up and running. Uh, you can contact us. We're out in the Boston area right now. If you need any kind of work done out here, please let us know. We uh, have special introductory prices available right now. We'd love to give uh, everyone a great deal um, because uh, we think we have some great stuff to offer and we'd love to help anyone out. Uh, leave uh, your thoughts in the comments. Uh, message us or comment below if you have any questions or if you want to talk about anything. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've got plenty to say from all the stuff we did last year. I know uh, a lot of people will work on one short for two years and we kind of banged out six in six months. Yeah. So... I think uh, I think that was something that that really helped us and really uh, started exercising our muscles and getting us going. So uh, more to come. Chlorine's coming out. Uh, more regular content to come now that it's the new year again. Uh, hopefully quarantine dies down and uh, yeah. we got some big announcements. So we'll see you soon.